Jay Baruchel is unapologetically Canadian. He's been in some blockbuster films. He's a Hollywood household name. Oh man, I should have gone first. But he's prided himself on making movies in Canada, about Canada, for Canadians. We wanted to give Canadian kids the movie that we feel like they've been waiting for since Slapshot. Goon is a sports comedy film about a hockey enforcer that brought a certain kind of Canadian culture to the world. Oh boy. This has all the elements of a sports masterpiece. It topped the box office the year it came out. He's followed it up with Goon 2. <laughs> he wrote it, directed it, and yes, he's in it. Hockey is in his blood, and he's a Habs fan through and through. We sat down in Toronto. <laughs> so you watched the... Habs Leafs game. I did. Yes, yeah, so, yes, I did. Now, when you watch a game like that, given yeah. your <laughs> knowledge of the game mm -hmm. and your understanding of the country, mm -hmm. um, I was at it. Yeah, I heard and it. there's there, you see much more than just the game. There's mm -hmm. something going on there. Yeah. What is it? Oh boy. Um, well, when I watch, I see. 60% uh, of the stadium in red sweaters, which always does my heart a lot of good. <laughs> um, that's a, when you're <laughs> watching in Montreal. That's it. Well, what, actually, but in Toronto, no, absolutely, I, they, there are a lot well, of Habs That's sweaters. it. Well, there's like there's been a few Montreal diasporas, and and also the Habs, like the Leafs, are one of those uh, teams that transcends the city that they're based in. Um, and so when I watch it, for me also, I hear my dad in my head because he, one of my earliest memories is. Habs leave Saturday Saturday night, and he said, "Like this is our country." He goes, "This is the Saturday night special." Like people, you know, fathers and sons have been watching this game on Saturday night for since God knows how long. Yeah. When I was when I was a kid, there were only two teams yeah, in right. Canada. Right, right? there's right. seven now. But yeah. in those days, no matter where you live in the country, you, yeah. you kind of had to pick yeah, right. blue or red. You yeah, know, right. You grew up, you grew up either blue or red. Uh, for Saturday night hockey, and uh, so I grew up blue. Yeah. So I watched that game. And it, what's great about it is, you know, there are, there are incredible loyalties mm -hmm. there. But it goes beyond that. It mm -hmm. really does kind of say something about the country. It does, and it also kind of, you know, it's it's funny that here we are in in uh, 2017, and the um, the em the emblem of the dialogue of of Canadianness is still Montreal, Toronto. It's this funny thing that, like, and, and this is not, and of course, I know that the minute I said that, I'm going to get a lot of hate tweets yeah, from Western, Western Canada. they're already going crazy. They're already sitting there on Twitter. Because <laughs> God knows, <laughs> and one more excuse for people to harp on about Western alienation. But, right. but, um, but no, it's, um, there, there's something ancient, and, and, and in this country, in this baby country, to have anything close to ancient is, is something special, especially because we, there's an institutional um, fear of owning our culture in this country and I think that's a good thing it's a blessing and a curse but like I try to tell people that in Canada you, it, we, we'd much rather you be um, a humble a, a humble failure than a than a, a braggadocious success <laughs> you, know, you, you if as long as you minded your own business you know and and I and I and it's good it makes it, it we're, we're bred uh, we make Humility, a pastime, you know, and 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 I, I like to call second guessing oneself Canada's only native art form, um, <laughs> but we have it, and 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 it's there and it's in us, and so, I, I, for me, um, when 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 there's a constant dialogue about what it is to be Canadian, and and it's nice to see certain things that we have. We, we have a patrimony. It's nice to have a cultural tapestry. We've only been going for X amount of years and who knows how long Canada will be here. So for me, I, I see the blue and the red on Saturday night is, um, yeah, it's right up there with <laughs> Saskatoon berry pie and, <laughs> and all that good stuff. But it is funny that when we talk about hockey defining us, the other answer that you you come up with it's got nothing to do with hockey mm -hmm. but the other answer that you come up with and you see it in some of the things you talk about is this you know we're being canadian means we're not american and then, and i and i dream of a day where it stops that stops being the filter you know okay and why is that because i think all outside of the only country that is more um singularly obsessed with identifying themselves against that one country is North Korea. 
Only, only the North Koreans are as American centric as we are. <laughs> you know, the, the, no, America dictates, and and st all of their domestic and foreign policy stems from America. And I'm, and I fall prey to it as much as anybody. There's this little brother syndrome here of like, when when you ask someone, so what's Canada like? And you are hard pressed to get the earnest, organic. Oh, it's it's lovely. You have to get like, well, down there they do this, but up here we do this. Well, listen, listen. At a certain point, we should compare ourselves to the world, not just one country, you know. And um, and and also because they're not comparing themselves to us, you know what I mean. If you asked any of them about us, they'd be like, uh, oh, uh, it's a Bob and Doug McKenzie, right? <laughs> Like it's just like they're not on the same like so th it's 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 not symbiotic and it's not it's not going both ways, and I think that like what makes our country awesome um, has to do has nothing to do with America has nothing to do with any other country it's 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 what's here yeah there's a lot to be proud of. Uh, I, this is the point in the interview where I pull up a couple of your quotes from the past. Oh God. You know, I which, talk a lot. Which means, you know, you'll never be able to run for prime minister <laughs> yes. when I read these. I've, I've made peace with that <laughs> already. Oh, we'll get to that. This, in a way, kind of relates to what we were just talking about there. Mm -hmm. uh, not directly, but, but it does in a little bit. You said this a couple of years ago. I'm just sick of watching Canadian movies with Canadian actors and Canadian backdrops, and then they exchange money and it's American cash. <laughs> Yeah. And so movie shot here. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Uh, but not about here. It, that's. It was sort of. Yeah. Well, there, there is this kind of, and it's changing. But for a long time, um, the the uh, a lot of the Canadian film industry, and in English, that's the, everything I said has nothing to do with the fr with, with, right. with Canadian French cinema, but Canadian English cinema, for a long time, um, endeavored to uh, best case scenario sneak themselves into uh, an aisle on Blockbuster and hopefully no one would notice it was a Canadian film. <laughs> that was like, that was like, that was, that was all, that was basically like the, the entire thought process was, well, we're kind of like them, so let's just make a movie sort of, and, and, and sneak it in there and they won't even notice, as opposed to just like owning what's awesome or just setting a movie here. Like, you know, cause like when, when we made Goon and it takes place, 90% of that movie takes place in Nova Scotia, um, and it came out in the States, and a lot of people have fallen in love with it. Do you think that the minute that they saw a Nova Scotia license plate, they hit pause, they're like, okay, I don't know what any of this is supposed to be. I can't watch this movie. No, because, because there's no such thing as prohibitively Canadian. It's insane. And so now, that was a tad hyperbolic what I said there. Um, it was, you know, interview 14 on a junket day at TIFF. But, 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 uh, but my point was this, was that like, like one of my favorite movies of all time is The Wrong Guy with Dave Foley. And, and I think it's a masterpiece. It's as funny a movie as I've ever seen. Um, now it is a Canadian flick and everyone involved with it's Canadian. And then there's Ohio license plates. For what reason? Because 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 the Ontario license plate might preclude a distributor from buying it in the states. Well, that's insane. And by the way, then it ends up looking kind of pandering and six on ten. And no, and who respects that? You know, like and 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 I hate using that movie as an example because it is a movie that's dear to me. But like, I just we it, busy work, endeavoring. We're, we're we're doing all this stuff that's not actually important. The stuff that, you know, what we need to be doing is telling awesome stories and getting people to go see movies, period, right? And the other side of that is, so we made, we tried to make movies that we tried to sneak into Blockbuster, and then the other movies we made were just for film students. And, and those movies should still exist. I, I, I'm, I'm so proud to live in a country where the government funds a movie like Kissed, okay? That's a beautiful thing. But God's honest truth is, Colin and Terry in Calgary aren't going to see Kissed on Saturday night, but they might go see Goon. And so, like, there's just, there's different types of Canadians, and so we should make movies for different types of Canadians. That's it. Okay. Because I think some people could have taken that to look like, you know, you were saying something, you know, against what is a burgeoning movie industry in Canada. Yeah. 
because it can supply the backdrops. One hundred percent. Great talent and it behind the cameras. And it always for has. Less cost. It, it, it always and it always has. And and we have been a service industry for American cinema and TV for a long time. And that's an awesome thing. And that keeps and that that keeps an industry going. And that provides great jobs for people up here. Um, but we need to do more than that. And, and like if we were in any other country in the world, it wouldn't even be a discussion. If someone wanted to make a movie in England that took place in England, no one would ask them why, you know? Yeah, uh, I, it's, it's a real point of pride um, in my family um, uh, for multiple generations. Here's another one, very oh different. Oh uh, no, I, I love this one. I think this says a lot about you and about the way you speak out about uh, your feelings about the country and, and what you think's right and wrong. One of the great shames of my life is that I didn't go to the Royal Military College in Kingston. Most of the men on my mother's side fought for the only country I call mine, but I didn't pull my weight yet. So I see working in Canada as a degree of civic service. Yeah, indeed, indeed, yeah. I, um it's a real point of pride um, in my family um, that for multiple generations we've served this country. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my granddad left uh, Halifax in 39, um, came back in 44 uh, alive, and as soon as he was home, re-enlisted to fight the Japanese, and then they surrendered. Um, he was then in Cyprus um, as well, and then uh, and then all my, a lot of my uncles, uh, my uncle Ron Purvis was a 30 year veteran of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, um, was a guarded uh, Queen Elizabeth II, in fact, um, on one of her trips to Canada. And um, so I grew up in a, in a family where uh, the brass ring was never outside of the country. I was raised to believe that this was the best country uh, God and the world had come up with so far. And, um, and, uh, and to be proud of what we've done. And, yeah, is and that I, part of the reason why you still live here? I think so. Not in Montreal, but you're getting no, close, I, closer to the ACC and the Leafs yeah. <laughs> every day. But, but um, because of that sort of pressure, because you could be living in L.A. Uh, without I, any trouble at all. I'm sure there's a lot yeah. of pressure from your friends and, and, and some of those in the industry to, yeah, to no, move there, but you don't. I don't, and, and also it's, it's, it's also just because like no other place is my home. Um, you know, there's places I, I, I adore. I, I, I adore Australia. I adore Scotland. I adore Ireland. I adore England. Um, I adore parts of the States. Um, but none of them are my home. And um, I was born in, in the best country in the world, and this is my country. And, I, and, if, and, and so, yeah, I wanted to be a soldier when I was a little kid. And then when I was in CJEP and I was like trying to think what university I was going to go to, really was thinking about going to the Royal Military College. I don't think they'd have accepted me. My, I was always a piss poor student, but, but, but I, um, and also. They'll be, they'll be calling you now <laughs> to come to our MC and, and, you know, and, and talk to the, uh, the young soldiers. Well, there. I'm a subscriber to Legion magazine too. So I, I, um, no, I, I, I also think that I grew up, um, an Anglo in Montreal in the nineties too. And that's not, uh, I think that's worthy of mention, just in terms of what informed my beliefs and my feelings about stuff. Because also, because we moved to Ontario in 88 and then moved back to Quebec in 93. And when we moved back to Quebec in 93, everyone was telling my dad, the, the joke was you're going the wrong way down the 401. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, because then within a year and a half, there's another referendum. And in 94... You were out there that day. Yes, we, yes I was. The, Mom and I were on, on St. Catherine Street underneath the giant flag. And in 94, in the 94 Quebec provincial election, my father and friends of his started their own political party. And my dad ran in our riding. Um, only got 140 votes, but 
I was like, I don't think we know 140 people, so at least like five strangers voted for my dad. <laughs> um, but it was like a really cool thing, as I was like my first year back in Quebec, and I was at all my dad's debates, and I had like, uh, so I was like had a very vivid, immediate, vital understanding of Quebec politics and Canadian politics and all this different stuff. And then at 18, I was working in the States. So I, so, so I was like tempered in the fire of Quebec and then put in another country. And, when, and, and the states that I, was, that I went to when I was 18 was in the throes of the 2000 Florida recount nonsense. And then a certain George W. Bush be, was elected president. And then, you know, uh, a, a lot of things happened between 2000 and 2003. And that was when I was in the states the most. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, that has informed my viewpoints to, uh, in, in, a, in a massive way. Um, but yeah, I, I, it, it, it's just this. It's, it's, this is my country. There's so few of us. Um, we haven't been here very long. If I was lucky enough to, to be able to have a career and, and create something in LA, I, I, first of all, I would be very grateful for that. But best case scenario, at the end of the day, I'd be adding to another country's cultural tapestry. Um, it means less. Down there, I'm just some guy. Um, and, and, and at the end of the day, I might get to create something, but I haven't, I haven't left anything behind up here. And it's a point of pride for me um, that, like when the first goon came out, you know, um, I was like, I could die tomorrow because I left this behind. I, I was like, you know. And then that's why I defended Hugh McLennan and Two Solitudes on Canada Reads is like, that's a massive, important bit of our tapestry. And I feel like I've already added a segment to it in my own little way. And that's a special thing. What does patriotism mean to you? Or, or did you just tell me in that answer? Yeah, um, I, 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 I think uh, it's loving your country, but not unconditionally. And to truly love someone or, or your country means to, uh, to be a, a harsh judge on it and to never accept that this is the best it can possibly be. And are you that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd like to think so. Like, I, I think that, you know, a um, person has a better shot in Canada than they do anywhere else in the world. Um, but we've still got a ton of work left to do and we should never be satisfied. Uh, we should always be endeavoring to be at the forefront of progress and to make sure that the average Canadian has uh, the best possible chances to make a good life for themselves as they can. Um, and so I, I adore our country and I think that there's a lot of things we get right, but I think there's some things that we get wrong and the, we need to deal with them. Because you step outside and not shyly of your comfort zone of acting and comedy, uh, to talk about things like this uh, have made some feel that you know you should do what your dad did. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you should run. Yeah. Uh, do you ever think about that? Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, since I was 12, just because I watched dad do it, you know, yeah. and, um, and I was on the debate team in high school and, and I was part of a very political group of gang of kids at my school and um, like my buddy Alex uh, has been a card carry member of the Liberal Party literally since he was 15. Um, and so, uh, yes, I've thought about it a great deal, um, but I, 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 would, I, I would have to be incredibly presumptuous to assume that anybody would respond to that positively, number one, and I'm not so vain as to assume that that would happen. I also, um, yeah, it's weird. The, the 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 older I get, the more I understand why we vote behind a curtain. Um, <laughs> I just like because I think that if you espouse a viewpoint, you should defend it and be willing to defend it uh, to the death. Um, anything short of that, you should keep your damn mouth shut. And I find that like 140 characters on Twitter affords a lot of people these like great little moments to have a soapbox. Um, and then they're not prepared for the windfall that comes after, with, like all of that, the, you know, because like, like, I do that, there's no point articulating a point if you're not going to argue its merits. So for me, it's like, do I have the appetite to do that? Um, I also like, 
I, I uh, who knows? I guess is my is 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 my answer. I, I, I real political answer. <laughs> yeah, well, because circumstances never might say never. Yeah, circumstances might dictate it. I, 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 I'm not a politician. I like to think of myself as an artist. I'm sure a lot of people take issue with me even using that term, artist. But, <laughs> but, um, but if something happens and circumstances dictate that. Um, yeah, stuff's go, not going the way it should in Canada, and I think I might be able to help in some way, then yeah, who knows. If my being here at all gets uh, one kid to pick up this book, then I will have justified my presence here because I truly think this is a special thing for everyone to experience. So um, don't let the fact that it's not the book uh, deter you. Um, get out there, get in touch with it. It's a special work. Last question. You have to be realistic mm -hmm. here, okay? Mm -hmm. This isn't about age-old loyalties. Yeah. This is, you gotta be realistic. Yep. Who's gonna win the cup? Oh, God. <laughs> ah, boy, oh, boy. That's a, that's a good question. I, I, I mean, I'd say it's probably not coming back to Canada this year. Um, I think the Habs are Canada's best hope and have been. Um, we're the last folks to do it. We'll be the ones to bring it home. Um, I think Carey Price is the best goalie in the world. So, you know, if he's doing his thing, we can kind of... Uh, he can't win it by himself. He can't win it by himself, he though. you got to score goals. No, I, I agree. And so if the boys start, start firing on all cylinders like they're supposed to, and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, and... and if they're gonna win it, they better win it soon. Yeah, I, I, you know I, who's coming. Yeah, hard down the track. Yeah, I, yeah well, I they're mean, just a couple of years away. Well, they, how long have they been saying that? Toronto's yeah, but had look a what we got now. Twenty-year, five-year like plan. Got. Five you got an American captain <laughs> in Montreal, <laughs> that's and very, we got an American that, that's superstar. Very, that's very true. Guide us and there. boy, did Carey rob him on Saturday night. Yeah, yeah that was he special. did. He did. Um, <laughs> I'd say the Capitals, uh, but. But the President's Trophy is a curse, so I, uh, yeah, I, I have absolutely no clue. I'm gonna, I have to say Montreal Canadiens. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's an honor, seriously. Mm -hmm.